Hello all my art loving friends. I hope you are doing well today. We are attempting to get to these gelatos today. I'm really excited about that because if we do get to them, and we are, that's the whole point of this video, we will be able to mark off one more thing on this list of really cool supplies we've received lately. So Faber Castell gelatos, check. Hi, I'm Miranda, and on this channel we do all kinds of fun art stuff, mostly watercolor, but once in a while we get distracted by another fun art supply like this. My photo inspiration will be this today. It is by Mona Edulesco, and I will be using my etcher sketchbook for that. I do have an unfinished painting over there in watercolor, but we'll be using this side. It's in the middle of the sketchbook, even though we are almost done with it. This was one of my unfinished pages in the middle, so we're going to do that. There are a few things I wanna try out before we get started. I wanna see if light colors will blend over the top of dark colors because I have only used the Marabou Art crayons with any degree of consistency. This paper here that I'm just testing on is Sketchbox exclusive that was sent to me in the art box takeover by Jake over at Doomsayer Designs. I'll link that video in the corner if you missed it. I'm going to wait, let that dry a minute, see if a lighter color will go over the top of that. In the meantime, let's take some unblended and see if a lighter color will go over the top of it or if it will just mix together. Not great and it does put the color on the crayon itself. And that is exactly what I expected. So in this inspiration here, I'll need to work from the front to the back, which is a little opposite of how I normally do things, but I think it'll work. In the meantime, let's test one other color and how well they blend. This is that one I pulled out and couldn't get back in, but it still fit in the cap, so I got lucky when I first received these. Oops. <laughs> well, that one blends a lot better than the black did. When I did the black one, I wasn't that impressed. <laughs> but that one's good, very good. So you don't have to use these just as crayons. You can shave some off and blend them with water and use them as like a watercolor. But I do like using supplies kind of as they come. I don't wanna to have to go through a lot of work to use them. So we'll try and just use them as a crayon like I do with the Marabou Art crayons. I do enjoy blending them with water after I put them down because it does fill in the spaces in the paper. Oh, that one's metallic. Hmm, okay. So these must be metallic. I better look and see if there's any information about these, about the box here, on the box here. Nope. Well, on these containers, these definitely look metallic here. This one, I can't tell. I don't think so. But that one sure was, and oh my goodness, is that pretty. I love metallic stuff. I don't think this one is though. So that is dry now. Let's take a slightly, we did that yellow last time. Let's take it just a slightly darker yellow. I don't think I would use, maybe I would use that, but see what this one looks like on its own, first of all. Okay, and if we mix it, very nice. And can we put it over the top of a mixed dark? Mm, yes and no. Yes, it shows up. It is pretty faded out though. So a lot of the black does show through. So the whole point of that exercise was, yes, I'm going to have to work from basically the front to the back within reason. There are some things I can kind of do, like basically I need to do my trees first and then fill in the lighter colors that touch those. So let's see though real quick, if we have a light color, we have several down already we could try this with, but let's try another color because why not? They're fun. Okay, mix that together. Oh, we just don't mix like I would like. We're gonna let that dry, but in the meantime, we can take a darker color like this purple, put it over the pink. Okay, beautiful, looks just great. Oh yes, yes please. So the darker over the lighter works, but the lighter over the darker is pretty marginal. Let's try another dark over this, like maybe a red. Yeah, beautiful. So that's good to know. And if we had this blue, like these branches that I have in this tree here, if we did the blue background all at once, can we draw branches over the top of them? Absolutely, yes. 
kind of curious about this red. Let's do an orange. Shows up, but not what I exactly would want. Let's do the super light yellow. It's pretty good. But the dark's where it's going to shine. Yep. <laughs> Definitely. All right, we should just get started. This is fun. So to translate from this to my sketch, I just put some guidelines here so that I know where the hill begins and ends-ish, and I can connect them very lightly. Probably can't even see it on screen, but you know I'm doing it. And then I find where that hill meets that, in my opinion, and where it meets over here. And I connect those in a nice rounded hill. Well, that was supposed to be rounded, but my hand shook, so there's that. Then we have the background, like a horizon line. This is where I normally get my ruler out, but it's like three feet away. That's too far. Whoopsie. Generally, horizon line. And then this comes in over here. I could make these lines darker. Those gelatos are, unless they're super light colors, like the yellows will cover my pencil lines. And then we can make some mountains, but we can make mountains up as we go. So I'm not too concerned about the mountains. What I do want to kind of sketch in are the trees, although they're kind of up to me also. I just want to get an idea of maybe wider on the bottom, narrower on the top, and then I want to change this. I appreciate in this painting how it has two trees framing the whole thing, but for me, I want three trees. I think three trees would be good, and I don't want to cover this intersection right here, so I'll come down and erase the line I started, come down, Make myself a kind of leaning tree here, a small tree, a smaller tree there, and it got too wide at the top, which tends to happen if you're not careful. And then we can do branches however we want. Okay, so that's the general idea of this whole piece. And now we can go in with the gelatos and make it a thing. I kind of think this tree's too close, actually. I'm kind of wondering. Yeah, I definitely want to spread that out and just put that small tree a little bit farther over here. And I do start with the trees, just like I mentioned, and it's really fun. I have an ultramarine blue, at least that's what I'm calling it right there, and then I put a lighter blue over it, and some black then comes in after that for the rest of the trees. And I piece in a lot of this before I add water to it, so it looks pretty, oh, choppy, broken up and stuff, and that's kind of the interesting thing when you're using these is you're like, hmm, I don't know if I really like the supply or not, but then when you add water, you're like, oh my goodness, <laughs> this is so much fun and I love how it looks. So just wait for the moment when I add water. It's, it's not too terribly far from now. You're gonna see it in a minute. I am grabbing the water. <laughs> There you go. Now, I didn't mind the tree getting darker, so that's why I started with the black. But if you want to keep your lighter colors lighter when you're doing that, you're going to want to start the water on the lighter part of the color and move into the darker color. And you can see I messed up that tree. That top of it is so wide. But this set came with those little sponges, and they work like little erasers, so that was perfect. I was able to fix that right up. Pretty amazing the transition that happens when you add water to these. And now I'm starting to lay in those flowery fields and those are really fun because I get to use all the fun colors, all the bright colors and purples and reds and oranges and yellows and some, I don't know, what is that, mint green? Anyway, it's really fun. I enjoy this part a lot. Just filling in the pieces. It's like doing a puzzle and you get to start filling in all the gaps. So if you've watched some of my older videos and then some of the ones in the last two weeks, you probably have noticed a difference in the audio and I'm still working on trying to figure that out. So bear with me. I know the audio is not perfect in this video still and I have a long ways to go. It was definitely better on my old system, but I can't move back to it. Things are broke on that system. Well, thank you so much for your patience and continuing to watch my videos anyway. I really appreciate it. Just know I am working on it. I know it's a thing and I will do my best to get it resolved quickly. In the meantime, look at all those pretty colors. <laughs> That's one of the most fun things when 
working with gelatos is all the pretty colors and you can get such a big payout in color on these. It's literally like taking a tube of lipstick or something and painting with it. I'm sure lipstick is probably a little bit more creamy than this, but it's the same concept. It feels very similar. I don't know. You guys ever pull out a tube of lipstick when you were little and paint with it? <laughs> I bet we all have. Maybe. Maybe. So I pretty well have all my colors laid in here and I get to add water now. This is the fun part. So my only concern here is to be careful and not go over the highlights in the water too much. I don't want to lose those and that's easy to do with the payout and color that you get from these. They'll just spread right over that if I let them. So I have to be careful. And at the very end in my closing there, I am telling you guys that I'll probably need to spray it with something like Kamar Varnish. And I just wanted to let you know that I did spray it with Kamar Varnish. It worked beautifully. I put a very thick coat on it, brought it outside, sprayed it, very much sprayed it because <laughs> this stuff is thick and I didn't want it to go spread around my sketchbook. So lots of spray and lots of dry time. And I have shut and opened the sketchbook several times since then, and it all appears to be fine. I will put all the links for everything I used in the description box below, like normal. And just real quick, tell you about my Patreon page. If you want extra videos, extra content from me, you can go check that out. The link is also in the description box below. And thank you to my existing Patreon supporters. You guys are awesome. And thank you for being here on YouTube, you guys, too. Just watching my video, I really appreciate that. I'm going to leave that for now. Oh, I should probably do my branches because I want to leave it and then come back and like take another look at it and see what I think. So yeah, let me do some branches and then I'll leave it for the night. And you'll see here when I do these branches, I kind of mess up on one or two of them also, but I'm able to erase them and fix them. So that's pretty awesome. Can't do that with acrylics now, can't? Well, I guess you could just paint over acrylics, but can't do it with watercolor. <laughs> Especially if it's a dark color, I guess you can lift. I don't know what I'm talking about, you guys. There you go. There's the branch. <laughs> I've let it sit a bit, and I am quite happy with it, actually. So it's kind of ironic because I'm like, oh, I could probably live without these. But when I'm first putting these on, I'm not sure that, you know, it's an art supply that is very interesting. I should keep it around. I mean, it's like the Marabou art crayons. And I kept those because the same thing. There's something about this art supply that is just intriguing. Yes, there, there's something about the art supply that is intriguing. And I think maybe the color payout is one of the things. But this is smeary. See? That was just from rubbing. I know my fingers are dirty from working with this anyway. But that purple on my finger is just from rubbing over that. So before I shut this sketchbook, I will seal this with my, probably my Kamar varnish. I don't really know what else to use. I don't have a whole lot of options. I have a few options, but I will seal this page before shutting the sketchbook because this unfinished painting over here does not need gelato all over it. <laughs> I put way too much time into that already. <laughs> don't do a painting like that, by the way. So will I keep these around? I don't know yet. I need to pull out my Marabou art crayons and compare the colors. This does have the metallics, which I don't have, but I need to compare. They were not different enough from each other to keep one over the other, although I would be more inclined, I think, to keep the Marabou ones. These just don't seem like they have a whole lot in the stick. And I think maybe they are slightly harder, like ever so slightly harder than the Marabou ones. Because of that, I will compare the colors later and decide, but not right now because, I don't know, I have other things to do. But that's fun. It, did kind of leave a mess everywhere from probably the side of my hand on the sketchbook right there. Do you guys use gelatos? What do you think? I think that they're great for these kind of palette knife painting kind of things. <laughs> if you have a bunch of references that would be good for palette knife painting, then they're probably going to be good for your gelatos. I do have a bunch more of these kind of paintings printed out because I use them in my oil painting class when we do a palette knife painting exercise at the college. So maybe I'll do more with the gelatos or the marabou art crayons with those other paintings. I think that would be really fun. Far in the future, one more idea to put on my list that never ends, <laughs> which I'm grateful for. All right, guys, enough blabbing. I will see you guys in the next video. Have a great time with your art. Bye for now. I have jelly beans in my mouth still. <laughs> Sorry.